Hello everybody, today I'm going to do a Finds of the Day video. I usually put these type of things at the ends of the vlogs, but I haven't had a chance to put together the next vlog of going to all the restores and thrift stores and all that. But I did want to share with you all the different things that I have found um, past weekends and this weekend. So let's go ahead and take a look. We'll start down here. I picked up this box of bulbs at a restore. All of them were 50 cents a piece. Start with this one since it's right here. It's a Lights of America 13 watt electronically ballasted flood bulb. The neat thing about it is that it is replaceable. You can replace the bulb in here. It is a four pin PL bulb, so it's not a preheat bulb with an electronic ballast. And that just slides in there, and this cover also will come off, but uh, I need two hands for that. So we'll set that aside. I also picked this up, I thought it was pretty neat. It's a Satco 5 watt CFL bulb. The globe does come off, but again, I need two hands for that. So pretty cool, a very early CFL. One of these halogen bulbs, I've seen these a lot online, but I haven't really ever seen one in person. This one is made by Bulbright, and it's 75 watt. I'm guessing it would go on some type of a fancy chandelier fixture or something like that, where you don't really want much of a bulb and just a bunch of light to reflect off the crystals or something to that nature. So a really interesting halogen bulb there. And we have two F, uh, I already forgot, F5T, oh wow, you know, I haven't done these in so long, I don't even remember. Let me get it out and we will remember that way. This is an F6T5, that makes way more sense, Sylvania, a very nice old one. <coughs> And then this one is a GE. And that's not the end with the etch on it. Let's slide it out the opposite end here. Oh, and the etch is rubbing off. So beautiful, my thumb just ruined the whole etch. Anyway, this box is a mix of Sylvania and GE bulbs. Here is the um, original shipping container. They're for preheat. They're Cool White Deluxe F8T5 bulbs. And here is a GE. And here is a Sylvania in the typical Sylvania packaging. I like how the phosphor coating doesn't go all the way to the end caps. So you can kind of see inside and see what is going on. So let's slide it out the opposite side. So we can take a look at this etch. And there we go. Very nice, older fluorescent bulbs. I always love finding stuff like that. Again, they were all 50 cents a piece. Really cool find. Here is one of those really interesting, like, decorative bulbs. It's only for, you know, decorative purposes. But it's really big. It's like the, um... PS53 or I don't know that's just the number that came to my head it's probably not that um, but it's one of those big incandescent bulb sizes probably would be like a thousand watt or 500 watt incandescent if it was a real actual you know bulb for lighting versus uh, aesthetics and things like that but yeah so it has a spiral filament inside and I'm not sure what the wattage is there's nothing printed on it at all I picked this up at Goodwill I think for like $2 or something, and they stuck all kinds of stuff to it, so I have to get all the sticky stuff off still. But that's not a big deal. It does work. Moving on down to something really cool here. This is one of those um, CRT bulbs. It's like a... just for producing light. I've seen these things on the lighting sites and the internet, but I've never really had one myself. So it's a VU1, or 1VU, however you want to pronounce the brand name. Or maybe it's this brand name, ESL. Not too sure. Anyway, it is high power factor and 19.5 watts. But it uses a cathode ray tube to produce light, at least as far as I understand the construction of this thing. When you do turn it on, it starts just like a really old black and white TV. And it just glows out from the center until the whole bulb area is filled. And of course, you can feel static on it when you turn it off, just like an old television. So that's really cool. I've always wanted to find one of these, 
but online they go for a pretty penny sometimes. So this was, oh, I think, probably $3 at Value Village. Everything at Value Village is way too expensive for what it is, I think. But if it's something unique like this, I'll definitely pick it up. Speaking of Value Village and expensive things, this is a Flamingo Neon Bulb. Now, it is $3. That's a little much, I think. But it is one of those neon decorative things, and I do really like those. So you can see the Flamingo in there and the Palm Tree. Really cool bulb. I have a similar one that says like cocoa tree or something um, that I got way back in the day. So that's really cool. I think Walmart used to sell these um, a very long time ago. I remember seeing them at the checkouts. So that, that was before they made super centers and things like that. Since we're on the thing of Value Village, we'll move on down here to the Sylvania Twin Tube 13 watt PL adapter. I picked this up for a pretty penny of four dollars. That's a little much. I do think that is a lot much for what this thing is, but the reason I picked it up is because inside it's in fantastic condition and there's instructions and I've never seen instructions with such a thing before. So I really wanted to pick it up because of that. Let me see if I can get them out. But it shows how to install it in a fixture and it has some pretty neat advertisements for it here. I'm just trying to get it out so I can share it with you. Very cool. That's definitely going to be in a separate video. But you have your separate bulb and the ballast is in the bottom. So it's a whole kit. I don't know if this was for, this probably wasn't directly for consumers, probably for, you know, a building manager to retrofit all of their lights. But really cool. Um, I'm a sucker for anything PL ballasted related, so that's really cool. Had to get that. Moving on up, here is a Philips Earthlight. It's one of those um, SL18 electronically ballasted bulbs. Um, I picked this up the same time I picked up this thing. $3. Again, a bit much, but I really like these. They last a long time, and it's a really good design. So, moving on. Well, um, before we do that, there is a video of one of these on my channel. Just search Earthlight and 18 Watt or whatever it is, and you'll probably find it. Anyway, moving on now. I picked these up at Rite Aid right at the end of Halloween when everything was on clearance. And they're flickering flame bulbs. Walmart sells a version just like this in the standard A19 shape. But I wanted to find these in the um, S shape. And they look just like what it shows here. They'll be in a separate video, so nothing too spectacular there other than a different bulb shape. So that was neat. I think those were $2 a piece because they were 50% off. Let's move on down here. These are some cords I picked up at the Second Use Building Material Place. They were a dollar a piece, but they gave them to me for 50 cents a piece. They're actually really nice. They're, they have the um, old fabric coating on them, but it's actually just a standard cord underneath. Here, this one you can see. It's just a standard cord, but they wrapped it in a very nice covering. And I'm always looking for standard ones like this, so that's a great find. Moving up here, this is something I picked up when I got the bulbs at Value Village. Whenever I find a laptop in good condition for a really cheap price, I always love to pick it up and mess around with it. Uh, it's a little fun projects. So anyway, this one is a Dell Inspiron. I picked it up for $5, and it came with its original power adapter here, which is good because I've never seen a plug like that, so that would have been hard to find. Let me open it up here. So there's the inside. There's a screen. It's a really high-resolution screen for what it is. And there's a particular model, Inspiron 4100. And it works. It works so good, I turned it on in the store. It's running Windows XP Professional. However, the sticker on the bottom is for Windows XP Home Edition, so it must have been changed at some point because it also has a 40 gigabyte IBM hard drive inside of it. So that must have been an all, also an upgrade because when I was looking these up online, it had a 10, 20, or 30 gig hard drive from what I was reading. So somebody definitely upgraded it at some point in that area anyway. Inside it has a 1 gigahertz Pentium 3. 
It says like 700 megahertz to 1000 megahertz. Um, Pentium 3 is inside of there. So maybe you can step it up or down, not too sure. But that's what it says in the BIOS. And it has 256 megabytes of memory. So I don't even know why you would enjoy using this with Windows XP. It was really slow. And uh, yeah, if you donate a computer like this to a thrift store or anyone, please erase all of your data off of it. I was able to see everything about the person that owned this thing, their family, pictures, important documents, everything like that. So it's really important that you clean off your machines before you donate them or get rid of them. Of course, I have no intentions of doing anything with any of their information, and it's all been wiped. I'm going to put um, Windows 98 on this, hopefully. If it doesn't work, I'll do Windows 2000, but I think that would be a better fit than Windows XP for this type of machine. So that'll be a really neat um, project. So that is that laptop. Very cool. Goes along with my other $5 laptop I got a while back. But there is still more. So let's take a look at that. Ah, yes. High intensity discharge fixtures. Gotta love these things. So let's start with this one. This is one of those like... Um, Heath Zenith things that you could pick up at the Home Cheapo or Lowe's or whatever. It's a 100 watt mercury vapor. Picked it up at the second use place for $3. It is really dirty. It needs to be cleaned up. But it does have a newer bulb in it. It doesn't have a lot of uh, blackening on the arc tube. So that's nice. So that'll be a fun little cleanup project. I have one of these I picked up at Goodwill for $8, brand new, it's a 70 watt high pressure sodium one, but it's always cool to find mercury vapor. Speaking of high pressure sodium, let's move on to this thing. So I found this at my local restore for $5, and it's brand new. It's a Hubble, like, um, I forgot the exact model of it already. But anyway, it's just one of these ceiling canopy lights. We have our refractor here. And inside, it is 50 watt high pressure sodium. I know it's a 35 watt bulb in there, but I took that out of my street light just so I could see what it looks like in here and so you have an idea as well. I don't have a 50 watt high pressure sodium bulb with me at the moment, so either I'll break down and go buy one or I'll hopefully get one from home because I have a ton of these, just like exactly this Sylvania one, but in 50 watt instead of 35. So I think that would look nice in here, a coated one. So you can see the sticker. And uh, when I saw it in store, I was like, well, it's obviously some type of a higher end company because that font looks really familiar. Anyway, the whole thing is plastic, but we do have this metal piece here. We have the wires, they've never been used. Again, a sticker with a font that looks somewhat familiar. So let me go ahead and flip it around again. This thing spins and turns and whatnot. Sorry for all the angles, I'm trying to hold it and do a bunch of things at once. So let's take out the bulb because I'll open it up and you can see what's inside. I really do like the design of how they set the bulb into the fixture itself so that if you're looking at it flat, you wouldn't see the bulb in there so it decreases glare and all that kind of stuff. This is going to be hard to take out with just one hand. There we go. And this is what it is. It is a Hubble. Where's the model? There it is. NRG401. And apparently it came in three different versions. There was a 50 watt high pressure sodium version, a dual 13 watt PL version, and uh, maybe a single 13 watt PL version or a dual 28 watt PL version, something like that. I'm not too sure, but there's two different fluorescent versions and one high intensity discharge version, which is this version right here. And it has very high quality ballast inside of it. The only date that I can find on the whole fixture is the date on the igniter here. So that's the date on it. I'm reading it upside down. Looks like 96. So very cool. I do love the design of these types of fixtures. They're just so simple. And I remember seeing these square fixtures all over the place um, when it was a thing to use high pressure sodium. Now everything is LED. 
and uh, not as interesting as high intensity discharges. But I just love how simple of a fixture this particular one is. The bolt fits in there perfectly. It's just the right size. You know they did a lot of engineering to figure this out. You know, the right light distribution for the size of bulb and everything. Apparently it did come with a bulb according to the spec sheets that I could find online, but uh, I didn't have it at the store. So whatever to that. Anyway, so we picked up some high intensity discharge fixtures. That's very cool. A laptop and a variety of other bulbs as well. Anyway, this is a pretty long video. We're going on to 16 minutes here just about. But I really wanted to share all of these different things with you. Once again, I really do hope you enjoyed this video, and also please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching.